Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel. If you are new to teaching yoga, thinking about teaching yoga in the future, then this video might come in very, very helpful to save you from making the same mistakes that I and I'm sure many, many other new yoga teachers make when we're first starting out instructing yoga classes. Number one, overcomplicating sequences. When you're first starting out, and maybe even later as well, you might feel the urge to try and put together really complex sequences of postures to keep people engaged, keep people interesting. But what tends to happen when you do that, particularly when you're fairly new to teaching yoga and you don't have a lot of experience or confidence perhaps yet, is that you overcomplicate it for yourself. And that means you might make little mistakes here or there, lose track of where you're going, and actually often not end up teaching in the, each individual posture particularly well. So people are in the class are likely to just get a bit lost, maybe feel like they're not getting it right because they're not sure that you are confident in what you're teaching. And it can just end up being much more complicated than it needs to be. So the lesson learned here, the acronym that I love is KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> so keep it simple. Learn to teach a really good foundational yoga sequence. Practice it again and again and again. Learn to teach it really, really well. Simple, traditional yoga postures. And give people really useful information on the specific cues for that pose so that they can feel like they're really nailing it and that actually by repeating the same sequence a few times in classes, people get the chance to figure out where they're going wrong, notice where they're making improvements. I think part of the mistake within this overcomplicating sequences is that we also often think that we need to do a totally different sequence every single class. And actually, particularly if you're teaching beginners or you're teaching people who are new to your classes, then people respond really well to repetition. If people get the chance to repeat a sequence a couple of times, two or three times over several weeks, they get the chance to really hone what they're doing and understand it. And that's where their individual and their personal yoga practice kind of develops because they know that they're improving each week and they're starting to understand the poses. Whereas if as teachers, if we're chopping and changing all the time and throwing in complicated new sequences, it can be just a bit overwhelming, a bit kind of bamboozling for people. And then they may, may not feel like they're really making progress. They might even feel like they're not very good at yoga or that they're just not quite getting it. So the lesson here is keep it simple, stupid. Learn a foundational sequence, teach it really well, and then build upon that gradually. Mistake number two is talking too much. Silence is golden is the lesson to learn here. When you are nervous and when you're just starting out as a yoga teacher, you're likely to be pretty nervous. You might find yourself, like I did, chattering away nonstop, nervously filling every gap, every moment with words. And that is natural and that will probably settle down as you become more relaxed in your teaching, as you gain confidence. But what it does for the people in the room, for the participants in your yoga class, is it kind of gives them some of your nervous energy or they can pick up on your nervous energy and it prevents them from being able to relax into their own practice. This is something that we talk about a lot on my yoga teacher training course, that when you are in the role of yoga teacher, the class is not your performance. It is your opportunity to facilitate a yoga practice for the participants in the room. So if you are non-stop talking, and similar to the last point, if you're putting on these really elaborate sequences because you they make you feel good or you enjoy doing them, it doesn't necessarily translate into a really good yoga class for the participants. So in terms of talking too much, what can you practically do to reduce the amount you're talking? What I would encourage you to try, first of all, is just practice giving 10 seconds of silence between instructions. For example, bring people into a yoga pose and say, take a nice long breath in and out. And we're going to stay here for two more breaths. And then just let there be a nice pause. Let people stay there, let them breathe, let them feel what they're doing and then move on to the next thing. And that's a really simple way that you can start to get more confident with those 
pauses, with those moments of quiet. And this is particularly important when we come into practices where we're going into shavasana, into a resting posture, or meditation, breathwork practices. There are going to be long periods of time where you need to just zip it and not say anything so that the people in your class can really experience practicing yoga for themselves. And this takes a little bit of trust as well. I think as a teacher, you have to trust that people are going to get what you're encouraging them to get. They're going to get that feeling of calm and peace, but you just have to trust and give them a bit of space to lean into it. And mistake number three, timekeeping, particularly rushing Shavasana. If you've taught a yoga class as a new yoga teacher, you have probably had this where you're really excited about what you're teaching, you go through a sequence, everyone's loving it, and then you look at the time and you need to get them down to the ground, relaxing and having a nice restful time in Shavasana, but you've got two minutes before the class is due to end. I've been there so many times when in my first years of teaching, it used to happen so often and every class I'd get so frustrated with myself because I know how important it is to give people that space to rest in Shavasana, to meditate, to have that calm, quiet experience at the end of the practice, which is really what the whole practice is building up towards. In the teachings of the eight limbs of yoga, we know that the asana, the movement, the breathwork, pranayama, Everything we're doing in the practice is to prepare for stillness. It's in preparation for learning to meditate. And so if we rush through that last bit of stillness, that Shavasana practice, then you can kind of feel like you've been cheated if you go to a class and you only get a minute of laying down. So the lesson here is simply keep an eye on the time. The method that I use these days is I know that to get people into Shavasana, to give them enough time, a good three or four minutes of resting there uninterrupted, and then also to have time to bring people back round slowly without rushing them and to close the class. That whole thing for me takes 10 minutes, minimum 10 minutes. So if I know that the class is finishing at 7 p.m., I know that about 6.50, I need to be getting people down to the ground if they're not already there so that I've got time to encourage people to put on layers if they need to, to get comfortable, to grab a blanket, to settle in and do all the things they need to do to arrive ready for Shavasana. And then I'll take maybe another minute of talking them through relaxing different parts of the body, helping them to get into that space of relaxation. And then I'll give at least three minutes where I don't say a thing with some gentle music or sometimes just silence, but three minutes minimum is my, my humble opinion on how long it takes to get into that state. Even longer is better, but three minutes is a nice amount to start with. And then I will start to slowly bring people around again and maybe let them know you've got another minute or two to slowly wake up so there's no rush. We're gonna take our time. And then when, we, when they come round, usually it is about the time that the class is due to end. This is important for a couple of reasons. As I've already said, it's important to give people that space to have some stillness at the end of the practice, an opportunity to tap into that meditative state potentially, but also timekeeping is so important in a yoga class, just in terms of respecting people's time. The participants coming along to your class, if they think the class finishes at seven, they might need to rush off straight away. And if they know that your classes always tend to run over, that's potentially gonna add an extra layer of stress to them and then potentially is gonna stop them from being able to really relax and enjoy their practice if they know that the teacher's not very good at finishing on time, so I'm gonna to need to rush off straight away as soon as we finish. So all round, timekeeping is a very important part of your yoga instruction. If you found this video helpful, it really helps me out if you click the like button, if you subscribe to this channel, and if you wanna make sure that you always see new videos from me when they come up, then if you click the little bell icon, you'll get a notification anytime there's a new video on this channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon.